Hello, everyone, and welcome to another installment of the NEOTA Network. Uh, today, we're actually going to continue on our stream of talks uh, about building blocks and templates and document management solutions and generally how you can leverage the platform to do a whole bunch of cool stuff. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to Dominique Simpson, who is the Director of Consulting and Solutions here at NEOTA Logic. Um, and Dom's going to take us through how you can leverage the latest building blocks uh, to enhance your Neota document automation solution. So really in just a few steps, you'll be shown how you can add the ability to store and retrieve documents uh, in popular third-party software with no coding required. Um, so this is part of our corporate legal, our law firm, our Neota platform, and of course our authors and builders stream. Uh, and Dom is an expert in Neota and definitely an expert under the hood. So uh, really exciting talk for those who are looking to leverage the most out of the tool, especially in that document automation space. So enough from me, uh, over to you, Dom, take it away. All right, thank you, Max. So my colleague Jackson Liu has just run a session on the building blocks concept. So if you missed that, I'd suggest listening to that recording once it's available, as that will give you some context for this session. What I'm looking to dive into today, though, is a few examples of our building blocks, which are out of the box solutions available in the Neota library for our customers, which are designed to speed up the delivery of your solution. And the type of building block that I want to focus on today are those that enable you to retrieve documents from your own document management system or to push a document from a Neota solution into that internal system. So today I'm going to show you exactly how to implement these uh, into your solutions. And the first one that I'm going to start off with is Box and then I'll run through uh, SharePoint Online. And to demonstrate these, uh, I'm going to use a master services agreement or MSA uh, use case template, which is a workflow that is also available in the Neota library for our customers to use off the shelf. So I'll jump over to that. And this is our MSA workflow. And essentially uh, what we've got here is a workflow that generates an MSA at the start. It then goes through a negotiation process, and then finally it is uh, goes through an e-signature process between the two parties. And at the very end of it, it gets stored, as in the document, the fully signed document, gets stored in Neotologic's database and gets emailed off to the appropriate parties. But let's imagine that we want to file it away in box at the end of the workflow. In order to do that, we essentially need to do three steps. The first step is that we want to import the building block. The second step is that we want to add it into our workflow. And the third step is that we need to configure the details for that box building block. So we are going to do those three steps. So first one is importing the building block. And to do that, we head over to the library, which is a tab in your workbench. And under building blocks, you'll find the box upload a file building block. So we're just going to import that in. Uh, we'll call it box uh, NN for Neota Network and import that. Then I'm just going to jump over to our workflow, give that a refresh and head to the apps tab. And this is where we can add in the application that we just imported. So box NN, and we'll add that in. And head back over to the workflow tab. Now, this is the end of the workflow. So I'm just going to zoom in there. And at the moment, it sends the email and then ends. But now we want to add in an extra piece where it gets uploaded to box. So I'm just going to move that end tag so I can delete it. Delete that. And now after this, I'm going to add a service task. So we add it as a service task because it happens in the background. So as soon as the document is generated, it gets automatically sent off to box. So this is our service task here. I'm just going to hit edit and we're going to choose our box NN that we just added in. And we're now up to the third step, configuring our box uh, building block. 
So the configurations that we need to do are essentially related to what do we want to file in box? What's the document? And what box folder do we want to put it in and whose box account? So to configure those, we drop down this menu here and we've got these three things to fill in. The first one is the file. So this, in this case, is generated in the uh, MSA workflow. So it already exist, exists. It's the document that's coming from DocuSign once it's signed. So we select that and that now knows the file to send to, Bocu, send to DocuSign, uh, sorry, send to box. We're now gonna add another row and we need to pick the folder ID. And this is essentially from box, where do we wanna file it? So each individual folder has a unique ID in box and we're just gonna for now select zero and write in zero because that's the parent folder in box. The final piece that we want to add in is our OAuth token name. So this is essentially the piece that ensures that it is in fact your box account that you're accessing uh, and you've got the rights to do so. And there are step-by-step -step instructions uh, for setting this up in the user manual. It's usually about a 10 minute sort of piece for an administrator to set up and it does only need to be set up once. So for us, we've already got our box uh, OAuth token set up and we would just enter that in here, which is called demo. And that's it. So there are some extra pieces that you might wanna add in, uh, such as if you wanna check uh, whether or not you get a response from box, you can set that up in the output section and then you could show the user a success message. So, you know, at the end of the workflow, it says, thank you for completing the workflow. Your document has been filed in box. So you could certainly do something like that but this is really all you need to do to get your file stored away. Since this session is only 10 minutes, I won't have time to run the whole solution end to end to show you that getting filed away, but I will demo the next one uh, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it at the start of the workflow uh, so that it makes it a lot quicker to demonstrate. So I'm just gonna collapse that in. So, and add in an end node at the end there so that the workflow will actually run when I need it to. So I'll just add that end node in. And now what we're gonna do is uh, have a look at the other side of the building box, which is retrieving a file. So we're going to put this one together and it, this time instead of box, we're going to be doing it with SharePoint. So even though the building block is doing something different, it's retrieving a file instead of uploading file, and it's also with a different platform, it is the same three steps. So we're going to import the building block, add it to our workflow, and then configure the details. So we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna go and grab the building block. So we're back into the library back into building blocks and now we want SharePoint uh, retrieve a file. So I'm going to hit import on that and we'll call that SharePoint and then import. Again, we're going to go back to the workflow. I'm just going to give that a refresh. We'll head over to the apps tab and I'm going to add that SharePoint and in app in that there. Head back to the flow tab and now this time I'm gonna add it at the start of the workflow. So we'll just jump over there, which means we wanna delete this link here. So at the very start of the workflow, we're gonna add in a service task again. So again, it's a service task because it's happening behind the scenes. What we're doing is retrieving a document from SharePoint before the user even, uh, actually sees anything. So they hit run, it retrieves the document, and then they'll see the application. And what we're gonna do is just show that document back to the user. So I'm going to choose our SharePoint application here now. And it's the same as the box piece where we're configuring the settings. So we're now to the third step for the SharePoint building block. And we now need to configure the details. And this is really where the main difference is when comparing it to box, because the different platforms have very different technical requirements. The good news is we've figured out all of those differences and technical complexities behind the scenes and then provided you the sort of no code approach to making that connection. And the result is you'll see some slight differences in the sort of information that you need to provide, but neither require any sort of coding. It's a lot of sort of copy paste and that sort of thing, like you saw with the building block 
building block four box. So here we're going to need a number of details about the SharePoint account and the document that you want to retrieve from SharePoint. And what I've got already open in this tab here is the document that we want to grab from SharePoint. So I've just uploaded an MSA to SharePoint and now we need to retrieve a couple of different details here. The first one is the SharePoint tenant URL, which is this. I'm just going to copy that, head back over here and choose the SharePoint tenant URL, enter some text and paste that in. And we're going to add another row. And the next one that we need is the file path. So head back to SharePoint and the file path you can grab by just clicking this, which is nice and handy. We head back to the workflow and text it in. Next one is uh, the SharePoint retrie uh, retrieve URL. And this is again, something that we can grab from that tab, which is very similar to the first one, but slightly longer. So I'll grab that, copy that and paste that in. And now all of these details about exactly which bits of information that you need are in the user manual. So you can refer to that. And the final piece that we need here is the tenant ID. And this is essentially a piece of unique information for your organization. Uh, similar to the box building block, how you need to identify your account, you need to do that here. And there's also a piece where you need to essentially uh, install a SharePoint connector into your site. Again, there are instructions on doing that in the user manual. And it's also a, a process that an administrator can do once and it's a relatively small piece of work. So I will just pull this off screen so that I can enter in the Neo to tenant ID without it being up on screen. And collapse that in and I'll pull that back up for you so you can see that again. So I've just collapsed in uh, the SharePoint building block there. And what I'm gonna do now is just connect that back up to the workflow. So now our workflow is finished off and connected and we are going to give that a run so that I can show you what that looks like. So if we hit play here, you'll be able to see this is the MSA workflow template that's loading up. There's more information and more videos on this if you're interested in it, uh, but what we've got a bit of an overview to start with, we're gonna hit start application. And the way that this is implemented is when we pick existing customer, we can pick customer A and then it's going to retrieve that document. It's actually already retrieved the document in the background, but it's gonna show the document to the user. Uh, so we'll just hit enter and that should pull back the document from SharePoint. So we've got that coming back in here. So this is the document that we were just looking at over in SharePoint here being retrieved in there. Now, when you're implementing this for your use case, you might want to add in some more complex logic around which document is retrieved, uh, or you might have it doing something completely different, like uh, joining the document to another document behind the scenes, or uh, pulling it in, just pulling that document in just so that you can store it in another third party solution or other document management uh, software. But whatever you'd like to do with it, uh, you've just seen the key elements of setting it up. So hopefully that's given you a good idea of what's involved with our building blocks and maybe inspired some ideas on what you could do. So that is all we've got time for today. But if you would like to learn more, head over to our user manual for detailed instructions on setting these up, or of course, reach out to your local customer success team to learn more. We do have some more building blocks with other platforms and other functionality in the works, uh, but we're always interested to know what you'd like to see in the library. So do let us know. But otherwise, that's all from me today. Back to you, Max. Thank you so much, Dom. That was fantastic, fantastic. You know, I think there's more and more we've developed the product over the past year, 18 months to have these building blocks, have these templates, have these starting points that you can really plug into your applications to give you that extra performance, that extra capability. So thank you for demoing those and showing us walking through those. And, you know, I think as powerful as Neota Logic is, as Neota is, that it's even more powerful when it works with outside tools and other integrations. You know, we really see Neota as the hub and the gateway to connect all of these pieces, share information, share documents in this case, 
So really fantastic. Thank you, Dom, for, for showing us and walking us through that. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining this session of the NEOTA Network. We have a lot more great stuff to come in day two. So uh, stick around, including more of these building blocks uh, and, and NEOTA-based platform-based talks, uh, in addition to some thought leadership and other great stuff. So feel free to sign up for more sessions uh, or customize your schedules as needed, join other streams. Uh, and if all of these talks, especially these building ones, are available to download after to, to replay them. So we'll be sure to send the link after the event. So thank you again for joining us and look forward to seeing you at the next session of the NEOTA Network.